accessibility champion. Have you ever wondered how blind and visually impaired users navigate Android devices? Today we are unlocking Talkback, Google's built-in screen reader that brings accessibility to Android users. By the end of this video, you will master Talkback gestures, test web accessibility like a pro and get my ultimate mobile accessibility testing checklist. And here's a fun challenge. If you have ever used voiceover on iPhone, you will love comparing it with Talkback. Which one do you think is easier to use? Stick around to find out. If my content has ever added value to you, hit that subscribe button. It keeps me motivated to help you build a more inclusive web. So what exactly is Talkback? Talkback is Android's built-in screen reader that helps users who are blind or have low vision navigate their phones using gestures and spoken feedback. And it's already on your Android device, so you don't need an extra app to download. If you're building an application for Android users, it's essential tool for accessibility testing ensuring your apps and websites are truly inclusive. Fun fact, did you know Google introduced Talkback in 2009? And it has improved dramatically over the years, adding multi-finger gestures, customizable settings, and braille keyboard support. Before we move on, drop a comment below. Have you ever tried using a screen reader? Now, if you are an Apple user, you might be wondering how different is TalkBack from VoiceOver? Let's break it down. TalkBack is the built-in screen reader for Android devices, whereas VoiceOver is inclusive to Apple devices. If you are choosing a phone for accessibility, knowing these differences is crucial. TalkBack relies on swipes and gestures, similar to VoiceOver, but with some variations. VoiceOver uses touch gestures and the rotor, a unique feature for quick navigation. If you switch between Android and iOS, there's definitely a learning curve. VoiceOver has the rotor, letting users jump from headings, links, and form controls with a twist gesture. TalkBack uses local context menu, which can be accessed by swiping up and write to provide options like navigations, settings, and reading controls. They both serve the same purpose, but the interaction is different. Talkback allows users to align custom gestures for different actions. However, voiceover gestures are fixed, but you can adjust the rotor settings for faster navigation. If you prefer personalization, TalkBack gives you more flexibility. TalkBack keeps focus on elements differently than VoiceOver. In some cases, TalkBack may require extra gestures to navigate through complex web components. On the other hand, VoiceOver tends to be more predictable in handling focus, especially for dynamic content. VoiceOver is often considered smoother for beginners due to consistent gestures and the rotor. Talkback gives you more control but has a steeper learning curve, especially for new users. And they both require practice. But once mastered, they make smartphones fully accessible. So the big question is which one is right for you? If you love customization and use Android, Talkback is your best bet. But if you want more refined experience and use Apple devices, VoiceOver is much better. Either way, accessibility is improving on both platforms, making digital experiences more inclusive. Comment below, do you use Android or an iPhone? All right, let's get this rolling. How do you turn on TalkBack? Here are the three simple ways and you have to comment your favorite in the comment section. Option one, 
the fastest way is to use google assistant just say hey google turn on talk back and boom it turns on and you can use the same command to turn it off saying hey google turn talk back off option 2 is through settings open settings go to accessibility tap talk back and toggle it on talk back on option 3 the volume button trick is my personal favorite hold the volume button for at least 3 seconds it will turn on the talk back and you can use the same button to turn it off you can customize your talk back settings and it's super easy go to accessibility select talk back and then go to settings you can adjust speech rate verbosity and gestures which method do you like the best drop your answers in the comment section Let's turn on the talk back and learn how to use it. Try these basic gestures with me. Swipe right or left to move between the elements. Chrome. Skill Sing logo. Go to home page. Link. Double tap to activate links available. Used collapsed. Menu. Button. Voice over. Screen reader demo. Heading collapsed. Menu. Button. Double tap to activate actions available. Use tap with three fingers to view. Double tap to activate buttons and links. Expanded. Let's explore Talkback's rotor or commonly known as reading control. Use your one finger and swipe up and down quickly to navigate through the different modes such as headings, links and controls. Words. Character. Spoken language. Speech rate. edit box full voice over screen reader demo heading 1 talk back off with apple voice over you can use two fingers to enable the rotor and choose among the options simply put your fingers on the screen and spin it like a dial it will switch among links headings controls and much more we will be using the same html from our previous video for voice over for this talk back example too we will start with the default settings let's explore this page by simply swiping right and left it should take us to the every single element on this page talk back on web view skill sing logo go to home page collapsed menu Voice over. Screen reader demo. Required field. Full name is a required field. Edit box. Full name is a re- email ID. Edit box. Your DOB. Now let's explore the reading controls. I'll be doing swipe up or down with single finger to navigate to the different options. Windows. Links. Controls. Headings. Swipe up or swipe down to read by headings. Now I'm going to swipe up or down to jump from one heading to another. Let's have a listen together. Terms and conditions. Heading 2. List of certifications. Heading 2. Terms and conditions. Voice over. Screen reader demo. Heading 1. Next, let's have a listen to the form controls. Characters. Spoken like speech re- window. links controls swipe up or swipe down to read by controls and i'm going to use swipe down to jump from one control to another edit box full name is a required field edit box your skill sing at gmail.com detect dob spin button mm/dd/yae double not checked in group option 1 of 2 man not checked in group option 2 of 2 collapsed not checked gap check box not checked tommy not checked each and them save your preferences but double tap to activate to trigger a button or a link you have to double tap on the screen so let's do it for the save button edit box full name is a required field enter your full name enter your full name 
English, US, already shown. Alternative filling options available above the keyboard. Expand toolbar. Actions available. Use tab with three fingers to view. Because we have coded this page using the right form validation, it took us to the input field with the error and made the announcement what is wrong with this field. So that's how the form validation works. Next, let's explore this hamburger menu. We will open it and see whether it announces it's in the expanded state or not. Collapsed. Let's double tap to expand it. Expanded. So it does announce it's in the expanded state. Next, let's explore the different links on this form. Lines, words, character, spoken like speech rate, windows, links. Now that I have activated links, let's explore each link on this page. I'm going to use the down swipe for this. Home, about, services, contact, XYZ terms and conditions, follow skills sing on YouTube, follow skills sing on Instagram. Now I'm going to use the up swipes to go back to the previous links on this page. Follow skills sing on YouTube, XYZ terms and conditions opens in a new window. Next, let's again go back to our controls and give you a good indication that when you switch to a control, it will bypass any paragraph or any label linked to an input field. It will jump from one control to another. And I'm going to use the up swipes to go back to the form. Not checked. Not checked. Not checked. It also announces what is the current state of an element, whether it is checked or unchecked. Collapsed. Not checked. Not checked. DOB. Edit box. Your skip. Edit box. Full name is a required field. Let's explore all the options available within the reader control. I'm going to use the upper swipes to quickly go through those different options. Paragraphs. Lines. Words. Character. Spoken language. Speech rate. Windows. Links. Controls. Headings, paragraphs, lines. So these are the various options that you get when you swipe up or down within the reader controls. To be honest, I found TalkBack a little tricky to use because I have used voiceover when doing accessibility testing and development. It certainly requires some learning curve. How did you feel? Was it tricky for you or you found it smooth? Comment below, I would love to hear them. promised, I have a checklist that will help you identify critical accessibility issues and create a more inclusive experience for TalkBack users. At number one, we have master navigation gestures. Swipe right or left to move between elements. Double tap to activate buttons, links and other interactive elements. Use two finger swipe up or down to scroll through the long content. And lastly, ensure all interactive elements are reachable using gestures. And number two, we have test with different accessibility settings and granularity. Adjust reading granularity by word, character or line to test text clarity. Use the reading controls to navigate by headings, links and form fields. Verify that list, tables, and structure content can be explored efficiently. And number three, validate with proper focus management. Ensure focus moves logically through the entire page. Check that the model dialogues and pop-ups receive focus immediately, like we saw in case of the error messages. Verify that the hidden elements, like anything that you're hiding from the main screen, are not focusable and confirm that form fields highlight correctly when navigated to. At number four, check for descriptive labels and feedback. Verify all buttons and links have clear and meaningful labels. Ensure images have appropriate alt text or are marked as decorative. Also, test if status messages like form errors are announced as soon as they appear on the page. 
Check that dynamic updates like live chat or any other notification are conveyed properly. And at number five, simulate real user scenarios. Navigate menus, fill out forms, and complete common tasks using TalkBack. Test in different orientation. Like we did only in portrait today, you need to test in a landscape mode as well. Use TalkBack with different speech rates and verbosity settings. And lastly, ensure third-party plugins and widgets are accessible too. Which tip do you find the most useful? Let me know in the comments if you learned something new today. TalkBack is more than just a screen reader. It's a powerful tool for accessibility and inclusion. Whether you are a tester, developer, or someone who just wants to build a more accessible solution, mastering TalkBack is a must. If you find this video helpful, then give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more accessibility insights and share this video with someone who needs to learn about accessibility. Let's make the digital world accessible one device at a time. See you in the next video. This is Param Singh, signing off.